What's worse than an ass full of gas? Max Silvestri tells us on this episode of Worst Gig Ever. Peace. <laughs> Max, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Uh, can I just say that you are a treat to the eyes? Oh, thank you. No this is empty. <laughs> so listen, why don't you just get up in front of that brick wall? Okay. And give us one of your worst gigs ever. College gigs tend to be the best and the worst. One, they're usually pretty lucrative. Sure. Uh, but worse in that, you know, they're, the people that are putting on the gigs have literally never put on a show before and after this year, once it's on their school resume or whatever, they'll never do it again. Um, but one time I did a college show and some like uh, some friends lived in nearby so they came out and I, this was also when I was first starting comedy so I was worse, very bad at it. <laughs> and a lot of my jokes were, um, you know, like kind of a weird story and then it would end with a lie. Because <laughs> I thought a lie was the funniest thing. And be like, and then a lie! Because isn't that crazy that it ended with a lie? Um, yeah. And I had this joke about uh, crazy names for hot sauces, which was a real observation that I'd like seen in some weird hot sauce store in the Southwest. Like all these names that were like, you know, atomic bomb and like fire holocaust. Like they really had these really intense <laughs> right. names. And then I had this like terrible joke, and it's like I was like, what's next? Like 9/11 hot sauces, and it was something like, you know. Let's roll this up onto a taquito. It like was nonsense. <laughs> what the punchline was, and it wasn't a joke that I like should have fought for. Being like, you guys can't handle my edginess or whatever. It was just a terrible Step joke. Step up to the edge. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry guys, you're not ready. My rebel brand of comedy with my black leather jeans or whatever. But as I'm saying this like terrible. Um, like never forget, I think the punchline was like, never forget how hot this is, or something like that. I Classic made eye contact nine. with one of the friends who was in the audience, and as I made eye contact and he was looking at me, I remembered that his his mom had been in one of the planes. And this was like three or four years after. Not, I mean, there's no amount of time where he's like, we have a laugh about that, but I mean, there was certainly for like the worst joke ever, and it just, I can, I don't have a very good backwards memory, but I can close my eyes at any time and picture his face, me saying that joke, what my body felt like. It's like one of those like <laughs> tent pole moments. That's what a tent, a tent is a thing where a horrible, horrible yeah, sure, thing is yeah. kept I, That's why I never go in tents. <laughs> never yeah. go in tents, but. They're intense. <laughs> I was like, oh, I should um, maybe never do comedy again. That was like how <laughs> adjusting a moment that was. How long out until out of your mouth? Was it like as it started to come out, you started realizing but you were the momentum was going? You know, I was, was doing going? the rest of the joke and I was just like, you know, nuclear, hot sauce, like right. just hitting the other points. And it was almost choreographed in that as I, you know, I'm looking around this like right. college rec room place and these friends who were not college kids were like standing in the back and it was like never forget how hot this is and like it was as i said that i accidentally made eye contact dramatic with moment I was in like, movie. i'm the worst piece of garbage and he sort of uh said it you know he just was stone-faced and like the show was only okay anyway and i just felt so weird after and a couple years later i opened for this they were a band uh and i opened for them at like bowery or something and I was like, oh, you sure? Like, you know, just in the sense of like, sometimes comedy doesn't go with music. And they're like, no, no, it would be really fun. Mm -hmm. We'd love to have you do this. Um, and I think it was maybe a showcase or something. I don't know if I asked for any guidance, but they were like, maybe just like, no. The, uh, a different band member, like my close friend was like, maybe just like, no 9-11 stuff. And I was like, no, no, no. It <laughs> stuck with I, them. Yeah, yeah, it, they certainly remember. It killed that. the first yeah, time. Exactly. Yeah. You still do that bid? Don't anymore. <laughs> yeah. And you should have acted like, oh, come on, that's the <laughs> linchpin of my yeah, whole Everyone's gonna be requesting it. <laughs> yeah. You know, you're gonna have an unruly audience for your set if they don't hear my monster 9-11 hot sauce bit. Uh, that is fantastic. Yeah, it's <laughs> terrible, it's terrible. I'm glad that's on to, video. Uh, Cheers. To the victim. Cheers. <laughs> Still don't have anything else. Uh, so Max, you got a full cup now. Oh, it feels amazing. It's lime, which I like. It's a little hint of lime, so the seltzer. All for you. Just little, that hint, little, that's all you need. It's not even sweetened, it's just the, you know. Sweet and seltzer. Just the essence. Mm. So you're doing a great job right now. Thank you. But have you had any terrible jobs in the past? And before I moved to New York and, uh, you know, did various white collar things to support comedy, I did construction with my parents for like many years. They had their own business. This last summer that we did it, we were like, we had bought a house to renovate it. 
my dad just had it bulldozed and was like, eh, I don't think it's gonna work. I think the foundation's weird, let's just build a new house. And we were like, cool, <laughs> so we have to do that. <laughs> so we worked the summer um, framing the house. Uh, you know, the foundation was poured and then it was like just the two of us driving an hour and a half both ways to like frame this house. Uh, I was 15 or whatever uh, and hated it. I hated working with my hands. and. So it was like this end of one of these days and we were like loading all the equipment back into our station wagon because we didn't have anywhere to keep stuff up there. It was just mm -hmm. like an open job site on the road. And right before we were done, like the neighbor from next door came out who we'd gotten to know and he was like this boring slow talker of a guy that just like came out with a cigar to get away from his wife and like I was just like fuming and stomping and kind of like trying to send, <laughs> be like, oh, I hate this, uh, come on, like tapping my foot really exaggerated. Uh, and to make it bigger so that he would really know from across the way how like ready to go I was, I like plopped down on top of the generator, which is the last thing that we hadn't put in the, the it was like, you know, this big heavy thing and I just like sat down on it like, Ugh. but just as I sat down on it, I sat down and the way the generator is, it's just like an engine with, you know, uh, plugs yeah. in the bottom and then a gas tank on top. And I sat down on top in this plastic gas tank depressed like this for me <laughs> sitting on it compressing the air and shooting um, gasoline through a <laughs> tiny air hole uh, on the cap in the center. So as I sat down, it just went like, like so intensely, like just concentrated. So I immediately like felt myself get wet and I like stood up and I was like, oh, that's weird. And I like realized cap hole gas. Right. Oh, okay, cool. Like I got gas in myself, a little embarrassed. So I just like stand up and try to like shake it off <laughs> and I'm tapping my foot again, but I'm starting to feel this kind of intense burn uh, because I don't know if you've ever had gasoline there, but that's yeah. not a place you should put it. It's that your candy gland is a very <laughs> sensitive area. Uh, so I'm still trying to like play it cool. So I uh, grab a water bottle out of the cooler in the back of the car and just like very subtly <laughs> facing away, like pour water down the back yeah. of my pants, just like trying to like, you know, just let it, you know. Just scooch it out. Maneuver, scooch its way yeah. through, you know, just like entrapment under the lasers just through my butt. Uh, and it's like coming out the bottom of my, you know, American Eagle cargo shorts or whatever. And I'm like, nope, it's still burning. If anything's water spreading the gasoline around and it's getting worse. So I now like have wet shorts, but it's like bad. And my dad's still talking to this guy. And the one thing we did up there, we didn't have power, but we had uh, a hose hookup. Oh. So I was like, I just need to go all in on this. So I like pull the hose to around the car. So like there's some sort of uh, shield between me and this neighbor and my dad. And it's not just a hose, it's like got the spray nozzle sure, on right. it. So I take it and I'm just like <laughs> spraying with full force like down my pants, like straightening my legs. So it's going like right out the bottom of my pant leg. And the car is protecting me from him, but not the road. Like we're just <laughs> right. literally anyone driving up on this like main street is seeing like a 15 year old child like <laughs> hiding behind a car, just spraying the hose, like learning about his body or whatever. Just watching like, his backside. Yeah. <laughs> um, they're like, that's not how you do it. Uh, <laughs> and it's still not working. So I, I'm like, maybe I need to like sneak up on this with a new <laughs> angle. So at this point I just like throw um, discretion to the, to the wind <laughs> and just put my leg up on the car and spray into the short leg. I'm like, maybe if I come up at it, that's that's what it needs to jostle it loose. And my dad, like the neighbor at that point, like sees over my dad's shoulder that I'm just like, ah. <laughs> you know, like, geez, you can't leave your son or like by himself for six minutes. He just like, you know, has a magical moment. Um, nozzles feel good, uh, but my dad's like, oh, we gotta go or whatever. And he comes back and I'm like dancing and still spraying. He's like, what are you doing? Uh, and I'm like, I sat on the thing and gas went up my butt. It like whined and um, he's like, get in the car. And we like load the compressor and I just have like soaking wet shorts. Uh, and we didn't talk about it because like I didn't, I didn't have a very like open butthole dialogue with my dad. Understandable. You know? Like he's, he was, you OBD, know, he was yeah. born in the 20s. Like they don't, you know, he thinks only gay people have buttholes. Right. Uh, the way he craps is he just like oh, squeezes his fist and it comes out his nails or whatever. Uh, but just like this whole hour and a half ride home, I'm just hovering like two inches above the seat. And that's why all my butt hair is blonde now. Now you know. I was wondering. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Keep me up at That was gonna be the third segment. So Max, you are, you're so gifted at so many things. Stop. <laughs> Keep going. Yeah, please, more. But is there anything that maybe you're not so good at? Um, no, no, but I'm good at a lot of very lame things. I mean, I'm also mm. bad at a ton of stuff, but it's kind of sad what I've like put my energy uh -huh. into. In eighth grade, we like, my whole eighth grade class just kind of like checked out 
uh, and it's kind of like a problem at the school that we were all just like, we're not gonna do anything yeah. and we don't care. Mass uh, malaise. Yeah. <laughs> sort of, yeah. <laughs> it was like, it was um, unorganized revolt or whatever. Right. We're just like, we don't give a shit about anything. <laughs> so I spent most of eighth grade English class learning um, to make, <laughs> basically I just started, uh, one, I taught myself that, that noise, which like, I think I'd seen Anthony Edwards do on ER, and I was like, yeah, house? it's amazing. Oh Can we turn that off? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> anyway, started to do that noise. I was like, I was realizing there was like, I'm just like, my mouth is a whole. So I started working on those bird call, like, you know, the, yeah. um, whatever, like yeah. started getting yeah. that. But then I started, I was like, I bet I can teach myself songs on this. Uh, so by the end of eighth grade, I felt that I'd taught myself Stairway to Heaven. On swan. the hand flute, I went big. I was like, yeah. anyone that wants to hear this talent wants to hear an eight and a half minute go big or go hour yeah. ballad. But I think I might still be able to do it. <clears throat> and this is kind of like this is the breakdown. You know, this is sure. not. I'm not starting from the beginning. And this it's is your the, see. That's the thing. You would think I might do the like kind of like flute ethereal right. part, but no, I actually the part do the like kind of made. For I do like the guitar flute. riff part. And on let's my be hand. let's be clear. This is your interpretation. Yeah, of yeah, the class. yeah. Yes. I mean, I think that um, I've been trying to get it to Jimmy Page, uh, <laughs> but he has not responded yet. Um, Seems not. You know, yeah. I feel like this will probably go pretty wide. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Uh, he's know, a fan of the show. He loves clips. Yeah. <laughs> so he sits in Alistair Crowley's house. Yeah, just exactly. Give yeah, me yeah. a clip, mate. <laughs> he doesn't have a computer, but he still watches YouTube. <laughs> yeah. It's very weird. <laughs> it was like, you could just buy a computer. You don't have to like keep shaving Dang. Virgin's pubes or whatever. He's like, no, 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 I like shaving the Virgin's pubes. I'm very fucked up. Um, but all right. <clears throat> So there you go. There's the wow. Room. That's stairway to heaven. I mean, that, that's <laughs> hey, at least yeah. To quote Wayne's World in reverse, stairway not denied. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that, I thought you were gonna say on party, and I was like, I don't know what that <laughs> means. Either way, <laughs> terrible. On party. Love it. So Max, we've come to a segment on the show called "Do Your Best with Our Worst." I'm ready. And we've gone into the worst gig ever vaults. Oh wow. And we've pulled out the giant book. Of dirty jokes compiled by Mr. J. Mr. J. In quotes. You're you're a stand-up comedian, among other things. You might have a, a a specific take, maybe a modern updating on some of these punch up these, these old these, these dusty, old classics. dusty jokes. You know, I was like my first uh, foray into humor was I. I got my parents to buy me this like 1001 like jokes, yucks, and pun em ups. It was like some ridiculous book. Pun and kids, pun -em ups. I might not have said Were there pun -em -ups. boners? No, no, definitely yeah, yeah, was pun em ups yeah, yeah. and boners. Spoofs, boners, <laughs> and pun em ups. This I is do. actually just one joke. <laughs> We're gonna the whole thing. It requires you to know so much about different. I think a lot of those jokes kind of depend on being like Scotsmen are like right, that or exactly. Welshmen. I like didn't even know what it was. You're right, we have all was. agreed on yeah, that yeah. idea. Germans maybe. do do that in a bar. Uh, <laughs> well, let's start with this one. All right. As, I've, uh, as I have the page marked here, I'm gonna read this one aloud. John had two pet monkeys whom he loved very much, but both died within two days of each other. He decided to take their bodies to the taxidermist so that they would be with him forever. The taxidermist gave him an estimate for the job and asked if he wanted them mounted. No, came the reply, just have them shaking hands. <laughs> <laughs> that is like the, an ideal joke uh, <laughs> in that it's like the whole turn is just like a misunderstanding between some sort of professional, yep. uh, someone who's good at their job, and a regular person. There's a bit of sex in it. I do like that the joke isn't just like, you know, a guy had to go to the dry cleaners. Like, right. it's so, it's like he had two monkeys <laughs> right. and wanted them stuffed. Like, you've already had to absorb such There's a world. There's a lot of plot that's like, been yeah, working. Yeah, I guess if I had two monkeys and they died at the same time? Right. Like, did they kill each other? Was it's it like a murder suey thing? Big pill to yeah. swallow, <laughs> but, but also John, that they would, sure. he wanted them to be with him forever, which is the nice kind of, yeah. Oh, yeah, no, it was background. heartwarming, but yeah. still, it's like, why'd your two monkeys yeah. die at the same time? Like, right. They were autoerotic asphyxiating each other. Uh, he might something... be a questionable pet owner. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it's like, we all laughed. Yeah, I it's mean, a great... maybe there isn't a whole lot you need to do with this one. That's yeah. also like the, that sort of perfect joke where, um, and you're telling it in mixed company, like when he says, you know, would you like them mounted? Even if you can't see where the joke is going, you're like, I'm about to get a little <laughs> yeah. bit of payoff. <laughs> this is gonna go somewhere. Kill yeah. Kill yeah. Yeah. This, this is, is gonna kill 90 seconds at a dinner party yeah. with friends of my parents. Definitely. Yeah. Um, People want to talk about taxidermy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Something you must monkeys. You <laughs> might consider working into your set at some point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Never forget. My audience <laughs> knows that uh, 
I love my monkeys, but I don't take good care of yeah. them. So they are basically <laughs> waiting for a joke about how they both died at the same time. Yeah. They died eating each other's faces because they were so starved they went cannibal. Anyway. Chilled monkey brains. <laughs> The Young Jones in the Temple of the Doom. Yeah, yeah. The Temple of the Doom. The Temple of the, of the Doom. The Turkish yeah. remake. Um, Jeff, why don't you read this one? We got another good one right here. The aged patient tottered into the doctor's office with a serious complaint. Doc, you gotta do something to lower my sex drive. Come on now, Mr. Peters. The doctor said. Doctor, that is a... Doctor is a typo. <laughs> your sex drive's all in your head. That's what I mean. You gotta lower it a little. That's a terrible, terrible joke. Um, <laughs> right? I mean, that one, like, you, you get, you know, yeah. it's like he wishes, he thinks about it, but his dick don't work. Uh, right. He's like, I wish it worked Let's there. just cut to the chase. Yeah. That's what he's talking about. Doctor, my dick don't work. Yeah. Right. Good night. That's the joke. <laughs> right. Why does it have to have the word toddled in the first <laughs> right. sentence? No one is being like, ooh, toddled, yeah. and I'm in a funny mood. <laughs> also, I appreciate that you said aged. He wasn't Eight? an aged patient. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. Classic joke, the yeah, man's yeah. a classic Got writing. A classic pronunciation. Like you're reading from the Once and Future yeah. King, the <laughs> right. aged. Also, um, like, it's another thing, like the whole monkey love thing, that it really presupposes that doctors would be like, your sex drive's all in your head. Like, that's not even, right, like, yeah. a thing that I feel like anyone... That has not aged well. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, this one is is the most brutal joke I think I've ever heard. So I'm very curious as to your reaction. Prep here. yourself. The elderly couple, celebrating their golden anniversary, had a night out on the town. After they prepared for bed, the husband reached across the felt for his wife's hand. Not tonight, dear, she said, withdrawing her hand. I'm too tired. Oh, that's, that's pretty, it. That's pretty dark and sad. That's, right? There's no joke. I, there, look, there's, that's it. I'm too tired. I'm too tired. Yeah. That's yeah, not like a like dirty joke. That's like tragic well, irony. It is. It's right. like, you know, uh, for sale baby shoes never worn or whatever. Right. You're just like, oh, Scenes this is from such... a failed marriage. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know. There's something Shakespearean about Scenes this. Here, from that a lost Let's try to think through this. Is yeah. there a way that that is a funny verbal joke we're missing? Like, I don't know. I, don't know. I, I can't don't think, think so. It, yeah. Felt is definitely not the, uh, I don't tired. Think the bunch of, uh, I'm too tired. Not tonight. Like, I, is the joke just that, like, yeah. of all the nights she should be doing it tonight, but she still won't? Right. Is, is it, it like relying a, on a catchphrase that I we don't, don't know, know about is it from 1924? In the sense of, like, uh, Oh, this woman won't even do it on her. Right. Well, the one night yeah. she should. I yeah. own her because I'm married <laughs> right. and, and she should have sex with But what is funny about that? Sex on your 50th anniversary oh. is the dividend of the investment you made right. when you bought this Look, woman. We may from have her to get in touch with Mr. J. Mr. J. <laughs> and see if we can get the final word on this because he's got this some answers is, he's got to give out. This is a down. Well, he got his degree and became Dr. J. Well, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> see you later, Mr. J. <laughs> So, Max, a question that we ask all of our guests. What do you think of the word gig? gig. I would never use that word uh, outside of, I think, with you guys. You said gig, and I was like, well, my worst gig is, uh, that's probably the first time sure. I've said it in a we long time. We set you up for failure. Yeah, you, I was like, you've made me be someone I hate. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, I just feel like, um, it feels a little too, um, self-satisfied about like, you know, <laughs> I'm just like a working word. jazz man, like, oh, you with your day job square, <laughs> like I got a gig in the village, yeah. Like just like, oh, can't you just be nice in front of her parents for one night? Like you don't have to be an insufferable piece of crap. What like, an asshole. You know, Thanks for dinner, I got a gig squares. Um, I just, it really, really makes me uncomfortable uh, and makes, I don't know, I feel like it makes comedy at least sound like less professional more just like grinding it out yeah. right uh, as opposed to you know I like to treat each set as uh, a miracle for both me <laughs> and the audience you know so sweet. a special you know communion that yeah. we're all sharing in so to call it a gig feels very like <clears throat> I did it and then I don't like <laughs> screw it. you also is it short for anything still trying to figure that one yeah, out yeah we still haven't figured that one out Gigenstein yep gig is like that yeah. it has a Germanic it does root, yeah. you know probably an engagement an engagement <laughs> Uh, like that. We're in gig to be married. Um, <laughs> we're in gig. I'm in gigged to the road. <laughs> <laughs> the road is right up there with gig. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. door is out of uh, the road. Yeah. Uh, uh, fantastic. We'll yes. Let me throw this back to me. Hey, Max. 
You got any uh, plugs you want to share with us? Uh, I have an album available called King Piglet that you can get on iTunes and Amazon or buy. Uh, and also I provide comedy for free every week in New York at Big Terrific and also on Twitter, which is accessible um, most countries except maybe like Syria or whatever. Right. Yeah. Fortunately, we have a huge Syrian audience. <laughs> <laughs> so this one might Sucks not fly. for you. <laughs> <laughs> so Max, this has been a treat. You've been one of our worst guests, Thank and you. we would like to present you with the worst gig ever statuette, oh, token nice. of our affection. Thank Jeff, you. the statuette, please. Oh. Why do you have to sigh? <laughs> mm. It's amazing. I, so this is a grilled hot dog because mm -hmm. it's got the lines right. uh, to let the steam out. You yep. want to pop on the grill. Exactly. You put lettuce around a hot dog? Is this like Chicago, Chicago style? Chicago style. Yeah. yeah. Gross, That's actually uh, um, uh, relish. Oh. And it's, it's only relish. because we relished you being on the show. Oh, I wish I had a pin to just put it on my lapel, but I don't, so I'll drop it in the pocket, forget about it, put it through the laundry, and never see it again. Thank you so much, Perfect. guys. Perfect. So, Max, you do a lot of traveling. I do. Uh, you, in fact, you have to leave this very studio to travel somewhere. I do have a flight in Doesn't three hours. Doesn't matter. Uh, we just want you, between Jeff and I, three things. Get home safe. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Not tonight. I'm too tired. Ooh. Next week on Worst Gig Ever. Look at Joe College over here. You score this semester? Well, I... As always, thank you guys for watching. You want more Worst Gigs? Click on us. Subscribe. Or if you want some audio versions, check out our podcast and subscribe. Thank you.